Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? While the handheld gaming mod scene is now better than ever, not everyone is interested in or able to do that kind of work themselves. And others are still looking for results that even the best quality mods can't yet provide. But there's a new retro handheld option, and it quite possibly could be the best one we've ever seen. There's been eager anticipation for the Analog Pocket, and the company kindly sent one my way for this review. In keeping with their tradition, it ships in minimalist packaging with just a USB-C cable and a couple of stickers. But the handheld itself looks sleek and modern, and feels solid and well-built. I was surprised by its size. My expectation was that it would be comparable to the Game Boy Pocket, especially given its name. But it's bigger than that, about the same size as a DMG, though a bit thinner. This makes it quite comfortable to hold, despite its boxy design, and gives it a satisfying weight. Calling it pocketable, though, might be a bit of a stretch. Pocket has a familiar layout. Four action buttons in a diamond arrangement on the right, and a simple D-pad on the left. They all have a satisfying feel, slightly firm but not clicky, and not very noisy either. Select and start flank a center menu button sporting the analog logo. Unlike Game Boy consoles, this one includes stereo speakers. They're on either side of the display, so there's little risk of muffling them with your hands while playing. The power and volume buttons are on the left side, while a simple micro SD card slot is on the right. We'll talk about that one more a little later. The bottom of the unit merges past and present. There's an old-school Game Boy Link port, which does work with original consoles, along with a stereo headphone jack. But between them is a USB-C port for charging and connecting Pocket to its optional dock accessory. An LED next to it indicates charging status, and the adjacent hole sports an IR transceiver for use with Game Boy Color games. There's a bit of retro flair on the back side with this groove design harking back to the DMG, and aside from the cartridge slot, there's just a pair of shoulder buttons. I've seen other handheld makers use this design before to mixed results. Thankfully, due to pocket size, they don't feel cramped or unwieldy to reach. Out of the box, Pocket accepts Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance cartridges. If you've ever used any of Analog's other consoles, the experience should be familiar. It can start up to the main menu, or you can set it to begin playing the game right away. It will, of course, play games from all regions, along with flashcards. Cartridge compatibility is always a concern, and while I don't have any truly oddball games, I can confirm the Game Boy camera works fine. Analog seems to have done its homework here. The owner's manual lists exactly what works and what doesn't, with really only a few things in the latter category. For the most part, Pocket should be able to play anything an original console can. And Pocket plays them well. Analog's claim to fame is its FPGA-based systems like the Super NT and Mega SG, which avoid software emulation in favor of a hardware-based solution. Pocket uses an Altera Cyclone 5 just like its counterparts, and the results give a very impressive experience. Gameplay is smooth and feels just like an original console. The display also deserves a decent amount of credit. It's a big 3.5 inch LCD with an incredibly high 1600 by 1440 pixel resolution and sits behind a Gorilla Glass cover. Given that Game Boy and Game Boy Color games have a resolution of 160 by 144, this means the display can use simple integer scaling to produce incredibly sharp results that fill the screen. Things get a little trickier with Game Boy Advance titles, which have a widescreen resolution of 240 by 160, so some interpolation has to be applied. And while this normally has the effect of softening the image, 
Given how many pixels the Pocket's display has to work with, the console does a good job minimizing this. There are, of course, a number of display modes available for each system type, some of which strive to simulate the look of an original console screen, complete with subtle LCD shadow effects. It would take far too long to go through all of the options here, but let's just say there are several color palettes and effects that handheld gamers are likely to be interested in. These are all accessed through the menus, but for quick brightness adjustments, one can simply hold the menu button and use volume up and down instead. Sound doesn't take a backseat either. It's just as clear and detailed as the visuals, at least if you're using headphones. Here's an example. The console has a 4300 milliamp hour battery built in, which is said to be good for between 6 and 10 hours of gameplay, largely depending on screen brightness. This may not seem like a lot, but when one considers that most handheld titles weren't designed to be played for many hours in one sitting anyway, it becomes a bit more palatable. Save states then are going to be of keen interest. At launch, the console is able to automatically suspend your game when you put it to sleep, and resume it when woken up. But if you power the console off completely, any progress is lost. There's a beta quick save feature to get around this, but it offers just one global save state, so it's really only useful for a single game. Thankfully, this limitation should only be temporary, as a fully featured save state system called Memories is said to be included in an upcoming firmware update. Those updates, incidentally, are done using the micro SD card slot. Just copy the update file to a card, and when powered on, Pocket will automatically install it. This functionality will no doubt be critical to most Pocket purchasers, not just for new features being added over time, but also for installing the hopefully forthcoming jailbroken firmware. With official firmware, Pocket cannot play ROM files off of SD cards, only original cartridges. But Analog's other consoles after launch saw the release of community-driven custom firmware to enable features like ROM file support, and there's no indication that this won't also be the case for Pocket. That said, Pocket isn't limited to Game Boy games with its stock firmware either. Through optional cartridge adapters, it can play Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, Atari Lynx, and TurboGrafx-16 games too. Game Gear support is especially interesting. While that console shares the same 160x144 resolution as the Game Boy, the original hardware actually had rectangular pixels, so Pocket displays those games in widescreen to preserve the aspect ratio. This leads to a fantastic image that's shockingly clear and sharp compared to how most have previously experienced these games. If you want a bit of a nostalgic hit though, there's a menu setting that very effectively mimics the look of the original Game Gear display. Either way, Pocket does an amazing job at giving these titles a new life. Another accessory available for Pocket is its docking station, which makes use of the USB-C port on the bottom. It offers 1080p video output through HDMI and a pair of USB ports for connecting external controllers. Analog also partnered with 8BitDo to support that company's wireless controllers without the need to plug in receiver dongles. Just like with the built-in screen, image quality over HDMI is nothing short of stellar.
There's no perceptible lag, and the controllers can even wake the pocket up if it's in sleep mode. It's nice to see that the analog dock is reasonably feature-rich like this, considering its price tag of about $100 US. And that's really my main gripe with the Pocket ecosystem. There are a number of interesting accessories, but they're a bit pricey. For example, those cartridge adapters go for $30 each. Pocket features a built-in copy of the Nano Loop music sequencer, and it supports MIDI control, but the interface cables cost $20. There's even a simple clear plastic case to store Pocket in that Analog is asking $30 for. All of these accessories are nice, but I wouldn't blame someone for getting the feeling of being nickeled and dimed if they wanted to take full advantage of the platform. Thankfully, the value equation is very different for the console itself. At $220 US, even with just what it's capable of out of the box, it's a compelling package. One could easily spend $100 bucks modding a single Game Boy console to offer better screen quality and sound, but then you'd still be stuck with the limitations of that system. With the inevitable custom firmware and ROM file support, Pocket will be far more than just a Game Boy, and not even limited to handheld systems either. Having access to a variety of retro gaming platforms on hardware like this is very exciting, and certainly explains the eager anticipation surrounding its launch. Ultimately, it's pretty simple. This is the Game Boy that many have wanted all along. Big thank you again to Analog for sending a pocket my way to check out. I'll of course include a link in the description if you want to learn more. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.